I am here with Brian Meredith of the Conk Stop. Hello. And, How you doing? Uh, you've been one of the helpful organizers of Emerald City, which is Correct. growing every year by leaps and bounds. Yes, it is. But this year you decided to take on something new. Yes. We've had you on before to talk about it, but now we're only about a month away. Right. Jet City Comic Con, September Jet 25th. Jet City Comic Show, yes. That is uh, coming right up, uh, what, six weeks or so? Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be awesome. So you're back where Emerald City started, <clears throat> the Seattle Center Exhibition Halls. Isn't that about where? No, not necessarily. Size-wise, yes. Yeah. Uh, different location. When we initially started Emerald City, it was in, like, the Westfield Plaza of the Questfield, uh, okay. which is just this tiny little narrow-looking thing, you know, kind of on the side of the building. It was kind of tiny, kind of big, you know, for us at the time anyway. <laughs> but it is kind of a more of a return to, like, Emerald City year one. Mm -hmm. Smaller scale, more focused special guests, uh, focus more on, like, the, the local creators and local dealers, vendors, that sort of thing. Sure. And it also seems like it's a little more focused on the independents as well. Yeah. Just by maybe by <clears throat> nature of being local, because then you can have more of a mm -hmm. role for Fantagraphics or even down from Portland, which coming up from Oni, Dark Horse, any of that. Right, yeah. I mean, actually, that's kind of the goal I would like to have for it, actually, is to have it be more of a, an indie show. Not as far as, say... Stumptown in Portland. Okay. I mean, that's covered. Stumptown's great. They got yeah. that nailed. But I'd like to have something that's kind of almost in between like an early Emerald City, but with more of an indie flair to it. Sure. And so hopefully in the next, you know, the following years, we'll have yeah. a really tight independent lineup. Okay. So let's talk a little about the guests that you've got coming. Okay. I mean, again, it's a lot of the locals. Right. Um, I know initially your first big announcement was Jim Woodring. Right who, I mean, does some amazing stuff, but is very much only known within the indie circles because of the way his work mm -hmm. goes. Well, yeah, actually, uh, Jim, yeah, Jim's stuff is amazing, and that was one of the reasons we wanted him. He's, he's, he's part of Seattle, you know? Yeah. He's part of the independent scene. He's been that way for ages. Um, same thing with Peter Bagg. Oh, yeah. Um, which we also have coming through. Uh, we have Fanagraphics. They're actually sponsoring those two guys, and they'll be All sitting right. with Fanagraphics at the show. Okay. But, yeah, we wanted to, we kind of wanted to go out the gate saying, listen, you know, this isn't Emerald City. This is something a little bit different, so we're going to spotlight guys that Emerald City normally wouldn't. Okay, so. that's fair. Any other guests, like media guests, that you're excited you were able um, to get? Well, actually, we're uh, we're pretty excited about just just about everybody. Well, really. sure. Uh, I'm very excited about having Dave Johnson and Dan Panosian. I uh, love their stuff, and these guys, uh, of course, the the originators of the Drink and Draw Social Club. Right. And they're actually going to host an official one at the show uh, Friday night, the 24th, at the Rendezvous. I believe we're going to start it at seven. Okay. And then, you know, let it run till it runs, and so. you know, it's going to be the usual artists right. and stuff drinking eating fries drawing goofy stuff who knows you know? all right so drink and draw rendezvous is right. in uh belltown around second and Belancher battery something like there. that yeah, yeah. It's, been yeah. A long time. it's like two blocks from the croc that's how i know yes. how to get there so <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I guess the one big uh, media guest you seem to be hyping on the postcard anyway oh, yeah. is Scott L. Schwartz. Yeah, that kind of just fell into our lap. We Initially, we decided we weren't going to do any media things for the show. Okay. It was just like, that's not really what we kind of wanted right. to go for. But he contacted us. We had a great conversation over the phone. And I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's just you know have him come up, have some fun, see what happens. Right. Um, really great guy. He's uh, known for being this... Uh, ultimate bad guy he's been a villain in like star trek right. buffy angel you know all sorts of movies you name it he's just this big hulk and monster of a dude and yet in real life he's you know he's a sweet dude he's a deputy sheriff he's got a uh a, he's got like a children's foundation oh, that nice. started for uh, like cancer victims things like that okay so you know he's very the opposite of what he portrays but he seemed sure. like just one of the nicest guys I ever talked to so I'm like you know what? why not let's bring him up and see what happens All and right. you know and if it goes well we'll see about maybe bringing some more unusual type of media guests in the past or in okay. the future so sure that makes sense and then we also who else do we got uh, we also got Francis Manipal coming uh, current artist for The Flash, nice. who uh, just turned in actually a very fantastic piece of artwork. Uh, so oh. we're going to actually have a print. Oh, a con exclusive. Stuff, con nice. exclusive. Form. Nice. We'll have a few. Right. Uh, Dan Burton is also going to be at the show, and he's going to be doing a piece as well. All right. Um, though, of course, you know, we got a lot of local guys as well, like uh, Matt Clark, you know, we got Josh Ortega. Right. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Greg, Greg Rucka. Greg Rucka. Because he's local ish. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Matt Southworth. Yes. You know? Very local. So, yeah. so, so we got a stump town presence there with the yeah, Oni. Yeah, yeah. Any oh, other Oni people coming up? Or? Um, hopefully. There's actually a few more people we're 
trying to talk into coming. You know, we mm -hmm. got a, a couple of seats reserved, and we've just been waiting right. to hear back. And as soon as we do, hopefully we'll be able to announce those guys in, a, in, okay. a, in the next couple of weeks. All right, sounds good. Um, so, everybody, September 25th at Seattle Center Exhibition Hall. Yep, uh, it'll run from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., I believe. Oh, uh, nice. Tickets are only $8. You Perfect. Can, you can buy them online at Brown Paper Tickets, or you can go to any of the Comic Stop locations or Corner Comics in Totem Lake and pick them up. Wow. So. Totem Lake people. There you go. There you go. You're covered. All right, so... We can switch gears a little because you've already started announcing a few <clears throat> people who are going to be present at Emerald City. Yes, we've already started the ball rolling on that. So the first two big announcements were William Shatner yes. and the cast of Fringe, or most of the cast of Fringe, I uh, guess. Yeah, we got yeah. Uh, John Noble and uh, his lovely assistant uh, will be right. will be joining the show. Do we get Joshua Jackson, a little Pacey Con action? Uh, that would be awesome. That would be very cool. We'd have, we'd have him in his own little room and everything to yeah. lock it. and and then pay people to peek in or something. I don't know. Well, It'll be fun. But who knows? We do actually have a bunch more that are going to be coming up. Uh, by the time this thing rolls online, we should have Brent Spiner announced officially. All right. Um, and we will be having a few more people. And I'm sure there will be some of our usual suspects, like, you know, Will Wheaton will be back ah. as well. I mean. But not an official guest this year, but just oh, uh, probably. You know, probably. It's yeah. just like, I mean, I'm just going to go with the odds, honestly, at this <laughs> point. He's been here every single year. Right. So. But there are some years where he doesn't have, he's got a table, but he's not necessarily one of the big media guests. True. True enough, yeah. And I think that definitely t took up a lot of his time this last year. Right, yeah. Yeah, it, it's one of those weird things where a lot of our guests, and not just, you know, like media, but with, uh, let's just say, you know, like Brian Michael Bendis. You mm. know, there's a good case. Star name, you know, writes yeah. 500 comics <laughs> for Marvel. Uh, he's pretty much been at our show each and every year for like the last six years yeah. or something. And yet, we don't exactly highlight him every single year. It's right. like it's kind of a given he comes. <laughs> and it's like, will he be here this year? Probably. Probably. You know, I don't, I'd be shocked if he doesn't, if he doesn't come. But will yeah. he be spotlighted? Will he be a focus? It kind of just depends on our lineup for the year. Sure. Because one of the things we always like to do with Emerald City is try to just, if not necessarily change up our lineup, at least focus it on different people each and every time. Sure. And, you know, there are certain, uh, definitely, creators, artists, writers I've run into absolutely love visiting Seattle and they always say they're going to yeah. come back every year and it's really great when they actually do because people right. can say anything in the moment but like for example I know Ben Templesmith has already announced right, yes. for Emerald and it's great to have him back for doing what because he always has the really long lines. Oh, yeah, yes. Ben, yeah, Ben's awesome. He's a great guy. Um, we're always glad to have him back. It's, it's guys like Ben and like say Derek Robertson for instance. Right. Another guy, you know, great, great dude, great artist comes back every year. I mean, yeah. it's, it's gotten to the point now where it's like we can't even say no to them. They're just right. like, we're going to be there. I'm going to be there. I have my table ready. I'm like, all right. Fair okay. enough. Mike Magnola. Yeah, Fine. yeah Mike, Mike Magnola back. We're uh, very excited about that. Yeah. It's going to be uh, wicked awesome. <laughs> So, yeah. Even Wicked Awesome. All right. Wicked Awesome, yes. And then something you were mentioning before we started filming in that, hmm. uh, Emerald City grows and grows, and so uh, yes. now we've got a different layout to the building. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, We're uh, kind of bursting at the seams with what we've got, <laughs> so we're trying to get a little more creative, and uh, there'll be a few changes to the show floor this year. The... Gaming has been taken off the actual show floor. Ah. We're not getting rid of it, but we're going to okay. make it more of an after-hours event. Where, so this way, we can move everybody over to like the panel rooms, have oh. different things going in their own space, and then they can run all night long. It doesn't matter. Um, Is that going like, to run up against the masquerade? Um, it'll actually probably run congruent with like it. Concurrently, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be, uh, like I said, it's lovely because, you know, we got all these different panel rooms we have access to. And since they're off the show floor, we can lock up the show floor at night. These guys can party till dawn if they want. And right. it's great. It's like we can have it go that way. Um, so it, plus it just it floor, it, uh, freed up the show floor so we can make some much needed changes to the artist alley. The whole flip, because again, one of our biggest problems, uh, to side, get a little <laughs> bit sidetracked here, yeah. has always been with the um, the big lines you get with certain guests. Yep. And some and you can't predict, but some, some you can't. Can. Some you absolutely right. know they're going to be long. Exactly. And uh, the changes I've made to the show floor should hopefully make it so that, like, one of our biggest problems, which I like to refer to as the Marvel Island, it's, it's <laughs> be, you know, it's Bendis and Emmy, Brubaker, all those guys. Yep. And honestly, they're going to be shoved all the way up against the back wall where there's a big, giant piece of show floor real estate in front uh, of them. So we should be able to make lines and not have it really affect all the other guys. 
Great. So it should be really good that way. Um, another big change we made to the show floor is the media area. Ooh, the convention self uh, convention center itself has built uh, has built the below the building. Oh. And so now, when you go through the show floor and you head to where the media section was. This is, you're going to come smack dab to a couple escalators, which take you down a floor to this beautiful floor. I mean, carpeted. It's just it's great. But down there is where we're going to have a whole media section. And it's five times the size that we, you know, if not bigger. We could easily. So that means five times the guests, obviously. Actually, I was, oddly enough, I was joking about this. I said, you know, we could have like two dozen media guests and we'd be okay for space. I mean, it's that, there's just that much space down there. Plus, our photo ops will be down there as well. Uh, which always take <clears throat> a fair amount of the showroom. Exactly. Floor. And just because of all it, we did have a lot of issues with that last year just because there was so much demand for it. Yeah. That now having it downstairs in, in two separate rooms, actually, one for pickup and one for the actual photos. Oh, nice. It should make it a lot more strong. Streamlined, and we're actually looking to resolve some issues with uh, like you know production and getting those pictures done like immediately, so that within like an hour or so you can come grab your photo and you're okay. done, as opposed to waiting until the next day. Oh, very so nice. So it should be it should be really nice that way. And then something now that interests me is because you've taken the media guests, you've taken the gaming, the show floor, you presumably have more room for it, and yet. Mm -hmm. You're almost sold out now. All yeah, the surprise, surprisingly space. enough. Yeah, I was oddly enough. I was working on applications the other day, and I started thinking, you know, this is a very long list that I have here, and so I did a preliminary count, and we are currently down to probably about 25 or 30 artist alley tables left, um, which. To be fair, some may open up later on, Sure. but we have to cap it because we have a lot of guests that we haven't even brought in or announced yet, so we had to just right. kind of put a nip and that in the bud. And then, yeah, then the vendors, the exhibitors, the publishers, dealers, uh, all those guys, there's about 30%, 30 to 35% left of the show okay. floor for that. Yeah. Get your applications in now. Pretty much. I Honestly, I predict probably in about two months that's going to be uh, completely shut down. Okay. Well, yeah. actually, it makes your life a little easier if it's done It does. Actually, yeah, actually, it, it does, because <laughs> I'll be able to get uh, exhibitor packets, badges, everything produced a lot earlier, so everything will be just, should run a lot more smoothly. A nice problem to have. It is. It, yeah. it very much is, yeah. And what do you, you know, it, it's one of those things where Emerald City has grown every year, and now you're seeing almost exponential growth still year yeah. to year. Yeah, this is going to be kind of an interesting experiment, too, because this year we're not only just growing sort of in size but also in days this is going to be the first time we're going to be a three-day show and we're going to have sort of a different hours on friday probably something like noon to seven or two to seven something like okay. that almost like a preview night but not really um we're still kind of hammering out the details on that sure. but we are going to be a three-day show and so you know that has to be taken into consideration with the growth and so we'll see exactly what happens but if we are very consistent we should, uh, boy, we should easily see 20, 22, 23,000 people through the door this coming year. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. I'm okay with that. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, Appreciate no problem. You.